we got Colton Beasley music here, vocalizing and socializing. Now, I think most of you know, I usually say that you want to have something that gets you people curious about you so they'll actually listen here. But I will say if you're not going that road, I think that's a pretty strong one right there. No, I think that makes sense. I like the profile picture situation. Yeah, that's cool uh, too. Uh, I, probably I, should be a link tree and not a YouTube link, though. That's what or I was going to say. Yeah, Koji. Or a Koji. Just anything people can actually type in. Like, if you don't have a thousand followers and you don't have a link, like, literally, I would just have dropoutmedia.net, which is my company site, right? Because that's, like, a lot easier to, like, read and then go and plug in than, like, youtube.com slash yada, yada, yada. Yeah, agreed. Okay, let's watch some TikToks. The screen is way too busy. Really? I don't agree. I guess my issue is that everything is compressed into that little band, and the stuff above and below, like all the text is just confusing. If it was moving, it would contribute, but otherwise it just feels like, oh, I'm watching this compressed thing with a lot of blurriness on either side. I think this is a very smart way when you've shot in a landscape of doing this, but what I will say too, like this is a cool frame. I think that that part is well done, but... I do think it's a few, it's actually a little too much of the frame and you could have pulled in a little bit on the shot. So we could have maybe gotten a little less because this is a lot. What I'll also say is like, I know we love a ripping guitar solo, some people more than me, but it really is the thing is that everybody's addicted to text uh, these days. And so having lyrics go by and things like that really, really helps watch time. We see it over and over and over again. Yeah. Aside from that, we're working with what you got here. It is a decent, decent thing. I just think it's a little too much. And like the fact is we're on this. I'm blind as hell. And I will tell you this. I would never be able to read those credits there or anything like that. Yeah. One thing I'll do when I have a vertical video mm -hmm. is I'll do. Um, you mean, a would you have a let's clarify this? Would you have a portrait video or a. I, 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 yes. Portrait and landscape, Matt. Jesus Christ. <laughs> when I have when I have a landscape video. This is what people came here for. I'll triple stack it. Mm -hmm. right? You can see this on a, few, on a few of the Metal Blade TikToks, where it's just the same thing repeated three times. And that way it's like a little more engaging and it's all moving on the same thing. And it like that just looks a little bit better. That's my suggestion too. That's all. Okay, so here's the next thing I want to discuss though. We have to discuss that these hashtags are how do I say this nicely? Uh, probably some of the worst ones we could do. People I know don't get trained in school how to do hashtags, but let's just get this out of the way while we're at the top. Hashtags teach TikTok the first people to show you to that would potentially like it. So you want it to be as niche as possible. So hashtag time, the idea that somebody who likes uh, time is going to think this TikTok is good is very low. Same thing with hashtag love the ride. And then singers of TikTok is one of the broad, most broad TikToks there is. So that is not going to be likely to do it. Now, I am not very good at this genre of music, but what I'd say is like, if you did more of like a hashtag Stevie Ravon or hashtag John Mayer, whatever those genres are, not necessarily saying hashtag those artists, but like whatever their genre is, you would be good at it. A thing I've been showing a lot of people lately is if you don't know good places to start, a good place to get clues is my favorite site, Music Stacks. In fact, I think I have a TikTok about this coming out in the next few days. What's that? Most of it, because I was looking for your content to steal. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, so I show this that... Um, so if you click on an artist here, it actually says what type of music they are. Now, singer songwriter, another one too broad. But you see how Neo Mellow, you might go, "What the fuck is that?" And you might look at that hashtag, and you'll see that that actually has a lot of hits. Doing that with like twelve artists is a really good clue on some hashtags you can use if you don't know what to use, and you can find it. I mean, that takes like five ten minutes of work. 
Ooh, I like that. Bu- bubble grunge is one of my old favorite genres back in the, in the day, uh, Shayla. I like that. That is like one of the first things is this is not going to get you to the, your first people. And a lot of the reason I normally see people who are really, really stalled on their TikTok growth is that they're doing these hashtags wrong and they're going to the wrong people. So as you can see on the screen here, I have this thing called vidIQ, and that actually tells you your engagement percentage. And that's not a terrible engagement percentage, but it's definitely not good. And if you get better hashtags, you're probably going to do better. And then all of this in here, it's much better to try to do a caption that like gets a little bit of engagement. So like even a thing of like, is this guitar so so uh, ripping? Should I do my hair the way it is in this video again? Anything like that that gets people engaged in the comments and so that their videos repeating more often is more likely to do you good than something is one year old. We have to get out of the tick the old Instagram mindset and into an engagement mindset when it comes to these algorithms these days. Yeah. That's that's a big one. Getting people to fucking talk about your stuff. Ode pizza. So editing, let's first talk about that. Having tights, ends, and beginnings on your video is super, 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 super important. All that time at the end there is going to kill your watches. This video would probably have triple the amount of watches if you had just literally clipped off that end, which you can do in the TikTok app. But really, you should be editing everything in CapCut or DaVinci Resolve, both of which are free. I think this was a great idea. Um, there's an app called Captions that is absolutely fantastic and cheap each month that will really, really help you do good looking lyrics on the screen and that will get way more. The other thing that really gets more on these videos is like if you put up a title like this is how much I love pizza. Uh, have you ever felt this way about pizza? Something like that. Instead of doing all of this in the captions, um, yet again, hashtags addicted and lactose free uh, get you probably nowhere hashtag pizza on this one might actually get you somewhere uh i had a pretty similar take like i think it's like you saw me laugh like it, it's it's genuinely a funny video right it's like that millennial pause versus gen z shake thing right yeah. where it's like like I, I'm at, explain that so gen x people and millennials are used to devices that like take a second before they start going so they pause and they wait for it to start recording and then millennials will just start or sorry gen z like me, will just start talking because they just assume it's recording. And I actually get really thrown when there's a pause because I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that. But the other piece is that every generation gets smarter and better at understanding the context from content. And so when you're trying to target people under 25 with your music, like it doesn't matter if that first half second is cut off because people will just put it together, right? It's like part of the Flynn effect thing where like people are getting smarter every 10 years. Every 20. Gen Z just... Gen Z just knows, you know, like, oh, I can just put together. It doesn't matter that I missed the first three words. And that's what TikTok is built on. It's built around, like, if people are missing that context, they're going to watch longer to try to get it if the video is interesting to them. So if you started even, like, uh, like on the, the downbeat of your parody, right, people would immediately be like, oh, wait, what? You know, like, is he about to, what is he, why is he doing Unchained Melody? And then, oh, my God, it's about pizza, you know? And I almost think it's sometimes better to start on the downbeat. Because like, you know, an, an eighth note in because it's like you're immediately brought into it, you know, so I think there's a lot of value there. People are expecting it to immediately start. If they have to wait, then they're just already gone. Watch. If you want to understand this, watch an eight year old use TikTok. No, but like I remember that, I was that, with- that, that called Child Protective Services on there, the parent for letting them use it at that age. <laughs> no, but I like remember watching my co- my younger cousins use TikTok. And I just remember watching them just like, because I was, I was talking to them, how do you know, like, what, what's good or not? They're like, oh, well, you just see. And like, they see like within like a tenth of a second. Like, everyone's like, oh, you're probably a second. That's dramatically too long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's got to start going before it even gets going. 
if a fun fact, we perceive around four milliseconds is where most people start perceiving. And uh, one of the things that they really train you in music, and um, if anybody's been through like intense music schools, uh, they train you on micro timing. And micro timing is getting down below the four millisecond thing that most humans can perceive of getting that accurate with your uh, timing. And we really do perceive. I go in and I really chop down to the millisecond uh, on my videos. Yeah. I wish. Da Vinci was actually a little bit better with letting me get a little bit more granular, easy, more easy without having to hit a bunch of keys to cut because it really matters. And to Matt's point where he's talking about starts, one of the big things is not giving a clue that it's actually about to end. You all probably saw that cringe video last week. Is Baby Gronk the new Riz King? I'm talking in the same thing so you never get the fulfillment of a conversation ending. Because if I stay in this tone, you won't know when the video is going to end and then it'll keep going. That's the lesson there is that like you almost want to end the video before people think you do. But what is interesting is uh, as somebody who's done a lot of A-B testing of do you put the hook in once or twice in a video is sometimes the double hook is what gets it into people's brains. With music, we're dealing with another phenomenon of the earworm actually needs to seep into the, the brain to work. But uh, so what could be really, really interesting is that like while you want to try to get a lack of resolution uh, there and you want to have it almost be a hair abrupt, what you also want is enough of the earworm that it actually concludes so somebody feels something emotional from the melody so that they want to keep listening to it since our goal is not only for that TikTok to spread, but for them to like it enough that they jump over to Spotify or YouTube and stream it. Yeah, well said. Electronic chill wave musician from New York. I like that because chill wave is a thing that if you're into it, you will probably be curious about it. But I still think we could generate more curiosity there so that somebody would want to click through. I just feel like that's not quite there. And then uh, you don't need to tell people you're on Spotify and YouTube. No, I think I think that makes sense. I'd maybe uh, save some characters, say, from NYC. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Agreed. You know, it's also helpful to be like new song out now or something. Or like that, 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 I see. I disagree. The new song out now is very ineffective. Okay. I I don't think that does anything. You want to create curiosity. That's where where I, you see the most click throughs. Well, I guess sorry. So I guess what's better is like listen to song now, I, right? I, so that people don't agree. Okay. No, I think that that's that's some Instagram 2016 <laughs> shit. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. So I could see these engagement percentages, but I want to find one. So this one has an 11% engagement rate, but a very low amount of views. I think these are really teachable sometimes uh, because sure. what's interesting about those is like, why did the algorithm not sp spread it? And we could probably figure that out a lot of the time. So let's give it a whirl. Sorry, the framing is pretty rough, especially because there aren't like even waveforms to really look at, you know, it's just hard to compel someone with framing like that. And like, I don't think that you shouldn't film your screen ever, because I think yeah, sometimes that there, there's a lot of those videos that do really well. Yeah, but I think that the framing has to be a little bit more, you can't split it between two things like that, especially if the angle is weird and the glare isn't there, et cetera, et cetera. The song is actually really good. I didn't realize that's what Chill Wave was. I think I thought Chill Wave was lo-fi, maybe. I, I, well, I mean, like the most uh, perfect example of Chill Wave, if you want just the most generic definition, it's that washed up song that plays at the beginning of Portlandia. Oh, yeah. But what I'm trying to say is the framing is what immediately struck me. You know, I also think when you have sort of a multicolored background that you're on, the text on screen that you use should have the, it should be like in my videos, like I have the black text on a white background like the bars are behind it, the white bar behind it, because that way it's at, there's the contrast is immediately there rather than here where I'm trying to pick out the words behind the tech. It just isn't very aesthetic. Uh, and that's also working against you. I think this would have worked a lot better if you had just cut that video, which looks cool vertically and just posted that. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I actually think like one of the weird genres uh, I've been seeing more and more, and one of the things I've been talking to some of my consulting clients about, mm -hmm. is when you make really cinematic music, like rather than this, like 
kind of just stealing a scene and trying to get away with posting it by putting some filters on it or changing the speed a little. One of my other really good tricks that I've stolen from a lot of other YouTubers is um, I get those lens flares um, and I yeah. blend those in to copyrighted material. And if you do that and you change the speed, most detection circuits can't figure out that you stole the video. That's how I do a lot of stealing on my channel that, or I'd put a little bit of waviness in it, um, with DaVinci resolve. But so anyway, what I'm saying here is a lot of the time, what a lot of people do is they like, we're like, wouldn't this scene have been better if it had this in it? And especially a movie like Blade Runner 2049, which I think literally was one of the most botched soundtracks, especially since Johan Johansson started it and he was the goat until he died. I think doing something like that can get you more plays. Virality is always something familiar plus something new. Mm -hmm. So if you're giving people something familiar, like a clip from a movie that feels appropriate, that's immediately go like if you did the Blade Runner 2049 bit, for example, that's immediately going to get people who like that movie engaged and going like, oh yes, I know that, you know. And especially movie with a very uh, clear aesthetic like Blade Runner does. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of a key piece to remember is like you can tap into existing aesthetics and things people are already into. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so here would be my thing. Yet again, we're in some niche stuff like cyberpunk music and retrowave could be cool. Chill wave could be cool. But like Blade Runner 2024 edit, you're probably not going to get as much right. Yet again, I recently had a TikTok that fully bombed to the point that I it was like just over the threshold where normally I would delete it and redo it differently. But I talked to a lot about that in your descriptions and in like what you put on the screen. You don't always need to say what, but you should be saying why. Uh, is sometimes a better question to do. And uh, this is, a, yet again, a little too much what. So, yeah, I would be less Blade Runner 2049. 20, like, literally, when you do your hashtags, say, who are the most niche nerds that would like this? Like, even sometimes for synth music, let's say you're using a synth that's a little more obscure or something like that, uh, or a technique that's a little bit more dorky. That's a good hashtag sometimes. No. I just want to point out on that using a dorky hashtag like that, realize that all of your early adopters in music are going to be musicians. Yeah. And yeah. so if you're using whatever technique you, if you're, if you have, you know, I don't how many followers does this guy have? Two, three, seven. Two, two, th yeah. So if you have 237 followers, you're really trying to get musicians on board with you because they're the people who's going to spread the word. They're the people you're connected to. So go, so cater your hashtags to them so that they'll see it. Cause like, those are the people who will like look in and try to understand these things and see what other people, cause they're looking for collabs they're looking for friends, whatever. And that's, you know, or they're just already kind of organically consuming nerdy synth content. So then you get recommended to them. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. So let's do this one since this one has a decent amount of plays for the account. Definitely chill wave and chill synth are great hashtags for that because that is right. You got a good amount of the screen on there. That's showing what you're doing and creates some curiosity. But uh, instead of doing this, like it's a status update, you should be like, I'm trying to get a little bit more vibe. What would you do? Things like that and create a conversation. Uh, obviously, hashtag Ableton is not doing you any good here. That's really what I'm seeing here. But I bet you the reason this one did a little bit better is this is a really, really good match for some of the more niche hashtags. That's what I was, that's what I was literally about to say. Also, that it's a really, really good match for the musician type people because they're the type of people who are going to look at this and say, oh, he was using this tool and he used these plugins. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then that's exactly what you were trying to get, right? It's like if you have 237 followers, you're trying to find other people who know about this and who know like hey this is how i should be you know yes uh, I, I, but to echo matt's thing yes a really good early growth strategy is showing how you do things and what you do with your instrument and uh, some i recently heard a really good one it wasn't a music marketer saying it, it was um what do you call it somebody was doing maker stuff in 3d printers and they said show your nerd and i really was like oh that's that's one i gotta adopt so father rapper black anarchist i think i've beaten this point home about the curiosity i like that there's a uh 
Koji in here. Matt, you seeing anything on the profile? I like I like the profile picture quite a bit, actually. Yeah, that's a good picture. The, especially with the black the It's bold because it's also just like I feel like having a cartoon of you almost implies that like someone cared enough to make art about you. But also, and, you, you, people, it's very attractive to not take everything so seriously. And a cartoon almost always has some sort of roast. And I think, you know, some genres, you know, like some of the stuff you're into, like you got to take it a little seriously. But it's like, you know, if you're not in black metal, if you're not taking it very seriously, everybody's like, well, I don't take this seriously. But like in most things, people like a little bit of humility. But, you know, some genres are for people with broken personalities. Let's do this. Let's look around. There's a lot of these that have pretty low percentages. Okay. There's a duet with war. And actually, that's a good thing for us to discuss. Actually, this one looks like it's a great one to discuss because it has very few plays, but a good engagement rate. Matt, one of the things I tend to find, and you're the duet king, so I want you to talk about this. One might say you are the the music marketing duetter just the same way Rihanna was the feature queen for a while in pop music. I tend to see this thing that the duet and tell me if I'm wrong here, is a lot more about how good the other person is and if you can recontextualize it by putting it in different hashtags or putting a title that gave it some context that the initial thing they say didn't say. What I mean by that is, for example, I recently did a duet that did better than the original, but I put a title on it that said what it was about more than they did uh, when their first sentence. Uh, what do you see there, Matt? I think that's entirely accurate. I think that I, I, there's a couple of things. One, uh, and I've scaled back the duet significantly on your advice, uh, and also the advice of our friend Isla Libby. Basically, when I was really learning TikTok, one of the things that was really hammered home to me is TikTok is just stealing TikTok. If it sees a piece of content that looks like a piece of content that worked before, it will just propel. It. And so, if you do a duet of something that was popular you're automatically going to get a better spot in the algorithm, right? And if you can add a little piece of content to that, you know, context to that, so like putting the title on, you know, which is what I always usually, you know, usually how I differentiate it, or putting in a good caption, you know, or just getting it in front of a better group of people or a more relevant group of people. Because like a lot of times what will happen is like when I do at Apes the State, which is one of my favorite TikToks, you know, like her followers are primarily folk punk people. You know, they're not usually like people trying to understand music marketing, although that's kind of shifting because of the content she's creating. But like, so I've done duets of her because all of my followers are there for music marketing. They aren't there for folk punk at all. You know, so I'm able to kind of like steal that and augment it by putting my own flair, my own brand on it. Literally just the application of the Bacon Spitz brand to her thing means it got more views than the original, right? Because the Bacon Spitz brand is about education or whatever and cigars and hair you know but i and so that's kind of my viewpoint of it and i think that like yeah you can recontextualize so much stuff and like and just the spirit of collaboration is important and that could definitely help if you can find like a cool way to collaborate but like i don't even know how to add volume on a duet like literally if you see my duets i'm just pointing with a cigar and i've gotten like hundreds of thousands of views i made probably tens of thousands of dollars at this point just from that i actually uh intentionally turn my mic down when i do it can you have your mic on when you do it I think you can, because yeah, people do those open mic. Good, bad, man. The open mic challenge. Of course, you can. Yeah, yeah. But here's just something I want to hammer on real fast: is like I have extremely little knowledge of CapCut or the TikTok app in general or whatever. I'm just really good at creating content people actually want to see, and that actually brings them value you know. And bringing value can mean anything from being entertaining to being educational to being a hot girl, like whatever. You know what I mean? That's all I'm doing. Like, I'm not, like, good at TikTok. I just create content that works on TikTok. And, like, even that last guy, like, some of those videos were, like, the video where he was literally just filming his screen, that's even less than I know how, or, you know, than I know how to do, and it fucking worked. So there's a few selfie videos here. And I want to point out, when you do selfie videos, one of the videos, he's definitely holding the camera too close to his face. And that's a big one. The camera needs to be, like, at least 18 inches from your face. If you hold it too close... And that's not, like, part of some sort of joke. It's not going to work, right? Like, the only time I'll get, like, this close to the camera <laughs> is when I'm trying to, like... Yeah, exactly. It's uncomfortable. That's, like, that's like if I get up here, I'm trying to, like, do a bit. You know what I mean? Like, back here feels comfortable, right? Because it's, like, there's this virtual 18 inches from my nose to the camera, and then another virtual 18 inches from Jesse's camera to his nose. 
So it's like we're sitting three feet away from each other, right? Which is how you kind of should feel. Getting too close fucks that up. Sorry, let's watch this. Yeah, well, well I, I was going to add to that there that um, one of the things that has been impressed upon me by my hot girl neighbor who has 2.6 million things, and just for the record for my girlfriend, I'm not calling her hot. She's like, that's her brand, is like a hot girl thing. And uh, <laughs> just trying to save this relationship since we're moving in together. Uh, anyway. <laughs> problem of like <laughs> relationship and also being a massive content creator but yeah, yeah, yeah. okay but but here i want to make the point she always stresses this that everybody has a certain angle and a certain distance that it works for and she's pointed out to me before like when i've done ones she's like this isn't working for you you're better looking than this and it is very important to learn which one of those and what i often say is Ask someone who's mildly attracted to you for help with that, and they usually will give you good advice. My girlfriend's really into makeup and, like, like taking really good selfies. Been incredible. The girl I dated before her was really into makeup and taking really good selfies. Uh, the girl I dated before, like, it's, it, that's really helpful. Like, I dated an influencer for a while, and it was like, oh, wow, this is that. It, you can see my content get better because I was dating an influencer. That is true. I did get a lot better when I did it an influencer. I just was miserable. Okay, we're watching this video. When two Zen masters meet each other on the street, they need no introduction. When thieves meet, they recognize one another instantly. I don't believe that this was probably the best earworm in this song. Yes, that is Alan Watts. Skate, skate Alex, too. Uh, caught it. Uh, fun fact about me. When I was a teenager, I worked at a radio station, and one of the first responsibilities they gave me was to hit play on the Alan Watts lectures that we aired every week. So I would hear all those. So that's a lot of why my brain is so broken, is having to listen to those at 16. So here would be my, my first thing. This footage, every one of these apps has color correction. I know sometimes we're posting raw. I know sometimes we're saying in the works, but like this really needs a lot of color correction and would pop way more if like you did literally before Matt and I got on, I played with our saturation and our things. Cause honestly, I'm on a absolutely awful camera today because I'm basically not resetting up my place because I'm, I'm literally have to start packing for moving when I'm done with this, but you can play with those dials and it'll get you such better footage. Matt, anything on the content? few things a like you said that was not the best hook which makes it immediately weird um you know so i think that works against you i think yeah like you said it's just when the color correction is when there's no color correction it just looks bland and if again if it's not immediately engaging then like you know you can't have sort of like laid back content that works in that way you know like maybe this would have worked if it started like on the downbeat of the hook but other than that, I just like I was bored before it. Yeah, like I'm like on a live stream supposed to comment about this, and I was bored. Yeah. Okay. Here's another thing. Hashtag Jersey City, New Jersey. TikTok does not like hashtags for locations. There's a location button for every one of your things. I've played around with this a lot too. It tends to work better to do your location if you are filming around an area like the, obviously this person's filming jersey city i know this actually that radio station i worked at where i did the alan watt stuff that was in jersey city about two blocks from where we are on the screen right now the location thing will give it to people who are there and that can be helpful for your discovery because tiktok and all i should say tiktok and instagram all do a thing where they actually also are weighing what people like in a certain location so they do certain things so you can juice an algorithm by, let's say you're at Katz's famous uh, deli or canters in LA, and you're pretending to be when Guns N' Roses would hang out in the dumpster there, and you're doing that at canters, that could actually juice you because you can get more views because they will show people who are around there who will get the joke. But you should not be using locations if it there is no locational context. If you're just in your bedroom and you're in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, there's no reason to use Greenpoint, Brooklyn, unless it starts to work for you. I bet if you were like a Polish American influencer, Greenpoint, Brooklyn would work for you. <laughs> for, for for those not getting for those not getting the joke, I live in a neighborhood called Little Warsaw, named after a Poland city. Or if you were like in a hardcore or emo band ten years ago and you used Greenpoint, Brooklyn, that would work too. Yeah. Okay. 
I, I want to get to more people, so I'm only going to start doing one of each of these. Let me uh, find more of them. I, I think there is an interesting thing, though, because just as Matt was talking about how early fans oftentimes are going to be the people who are musicians, your early fans also can be the people who are uh, close by you. And uh, because of that, sometimes finding those location ones and enabling discovery. Like I remember it was actually very funny back in the day is, uh, one of the bands I managed, his parents owned a local sandwich shop. Everybody really loved the Instagram hashtags from that of them playing his band. Actually, people would come up to us after the show and be like, you guys are always in the hoagie shops thing. Like, and they would find that because of the local thing, like local stuff can do you good, but you have to make sure there's context to it. That's going to make sense. Okay, debut single Us 2 is out now. Link in my Insta bio. Link in my Insta bio is interesting for people who don't have... That is interesting. I don't think I've seen that before. I would... See, here would be my thing. I would put your at Koji tag. I think that that's good, right? Yeah, that, that speak for the people who are just listening. Don't, get that thing out of your mouth. Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, let's look at which one of these is fun to do. Actually, this is interesting. So this has a very high engagement. So for everybody you should know, if you use vidIQ, if you're above 12% on engagement rate and you're above a couple hundred views, you're actually doing very, very, very well. And that oftentimes you'd be doing bit better if you just optimized a little. So let's look at this video. Since this is a 16% engagement rate as 547, which I think is well above the threshold where like sometimes you get to have like a 27% engagement rate because there's 70 people who watched it. And it's all your friends. But like this is probably actually a good teachable one. Let's watch this. Call me, don't you text me. Cause I can hear it when you smile. Told you I've been meaning to call. Well, I know it's been a while Whoa, to the left lane Move straight through that stop sign Just so I could get there But I've never been on time The story that you told me You were happy and it's fine But I'd like to be there We'll be there every time I'd like to be there, be there every time. I think this is actually a pretty damn good performance, but there's a bunch of flaws. This should have been zoomed in more. You can hear a ton of emotion coming out of it, but you can't see it as much. And if people can see it and hear it, they'll be more powerful. I think the other thing uh, that I'm really seeing here is that this is just way, way too long. That it should have just been that part where he really opened up. Or you could do the Nirvana thing where you showed it was kind of chill for a second and then really opened up. Yeah. Uh, my other piece on this is lighting. Yeah, oh yeah, good it point. Is, is it's real dark. And like I think that if the light had been better, it would be... Way more because like the hook is really good and he again he was really good he started right on the earworm right mm -hmm. so, and, and it's a good earworm and it's an emotional song so you're immediately like what is this right but I also think that it just it, like it, it like it needs to be more concise right like it's just it needs to be better lit and it needs to be closer to him yeah and then that would like have taken that from good to like really great and like gotten people stoked yeah one and, of the things people always say is like, what do I do with my money? And I'm like, well, just the same way that you need to buy your like focus, right? Scarlet at first is like getting a light, a, a like cheap Godox light and with a dome on it, when you're making a lot of content, like that $180 of that with the stand is like, it can do so much for you. It's incredible because it can make, it make you look good. It can make your videos feel better. It can make people see the expression on your face. You know, you want to add another $100 I always tell everybody this one, the Aperture MC, uh, so that way you can do cool color effects to yourself. This can do literally every color in the book. One of the best buys I know of. Uh, use it all the time for my makeup tutorials, of course. Okay, part two does almost nothing unless like you're telling a story about when you almost got kidnapped for a song that's not a thing. Yet again, FYP and hashtag music are the literally like two hole in your head. It's not even hole in your head. You're not dumb for doing it because no one teaches this thing, but they do nothing for you. They just literally you save the keystroke so you don't get uh tendonitis like me yeah i would not do that yet again like 
move past that. All right, let me find who I lost here. Uh, it's at uh, Witchy Must Die. Unless, of course, she didn't post her thing at, before and she just lied and said I skipped her, which would actually be like really devious, and then we should do her anyway. So I make music heart. Uh, I mean, that really doesn't say anything, but uh, 17,000 followers is doing pretty good. 6% engagement rate, so we could get that up. But your overall engagement rate, when it's above 8, you're really killing the game. I just want to say I like that Like, there's actually a pretty clear set of aesthetics that define this one. You yeah. know, and that, oh, that's, you know, that's a great point. They're talking to the camera with this with a similar background, which is super helpful. You know, there's the anime theme, which is super helpful. Like when I'm looking at someone, I need to be able to scroll through. And like if I'm just scrolling, I want to be able to get a taste of what they're about. You know, and so like Jesse and I basically achieve that through having titles on our TikToks, yeah. you know. You know, and I have the cigar to kind of give it that like douchey music industry vibe. Oh, it's also so that people remember who you are, just the same way that I usually have that pink hat on and these same glasses. Oh, right? well, I just just see, I don't weird. wear that everywhere. Yeah, it's like I like have literally been asked about the cigar on like four continents now. Like everywhere I go, that's what people want to know about. Like, but the way uh, Witchy is doing this, especially with like the heart filter over their head. You know, that's, like, super, super valuable. Because, again, it's just like, oh, you're that person with the heart filter on your head and the and the the sort of uh, super pale makeup on TikTok. Immediately yeah. different. Right? Like it's a, right, because it's like, you get a sense of what they're about and their look and their aesthetic just by thumbing through, looking for, you know, just looking for the one that blew up. Although Lil Witchy tells us, uh, my ones that blew up, you'll never find they're super old. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh. Let's try it. this. This one. This one is fifteen k. So I'm gonna try it. So this is an interesting one because this is yet again one of those ones that proves the thing that TikTok and Instagram also take in uh, what's typed onto the screen as well as what you put in your thing because I would argue that the FYP and underground music didn't do much but what did do it is having all this very niche stuff on the left here in this video and uh, that probably really helped it know who to serve it to. So that is a very nice lesson right there uh, and I think that this style of video in general especially if you find very niche artists is a very good style uh, uh i will say the cut at the end could have been quicker i was actually surprised yeah. how long that cut took after because usually the, the these styles of videos are like if you like and it plays the hook you should try me cut so that surprised me a little bit but whatever it's it's still cool yeah but somebody i remember i watched a really good tiktok a while back that uh showed like this guy showed the proof that the uh tiktok's detecting certain things in the writing and everything and like we all have seen it now that they're uh when you cross out the thing you don't get content banned and then when you do so uh everybody i you know there's so much uh witchcraft and false information but that one has been very proven that tiktok uses that for both the algorithm and for content warning stuff since tiktok is literally one of the only platforms that actually does content moderation okay a gospel artist i love making chill songs with a touch of rap see like you have a lot of good ingredients in there but like if you'd gotten gospel in with like gospel gospel chill songs with a touch of rap that's curiosity inducing since you don't hear that every day i hate also that desktop doesn't have pin videos let's do this most recent one I'm going to steal Matt's one. I feel like the loop could have been a little tighter at the end. Definitely could have lit this a little bit better. You seem like you're a handsome fella. We could see that a little bit better. Uh, I will also say this, that um, 
One of the weirdest things I've learned on TikTok, you need to go off about 10% more than you think you should uh, to really have people feel it. And I feel like this is like a, you're feeling the song a little bit, you need to really feel the song and like go a little harder than you think you should. Matt? Yes. Uh, I want to point out my personal pet peeve is like, I kind of hate, uh, I just hate whiny content, right? And it's kind of whiny to just be like, oh, waiting for the world to hear my song. Like... I don't know, that, that doesn't resonate for me. Um, and I think that makes you seem, it just makes, it's just weird. You know what I mean? Like, the song should be enticing of its own merit. It shouldn't be you begging the world to listen. Do you know what I mean? And I think when you start showing yeah. that you're begging, people immediately are turned off and immediately are like, oh, this fucking guy. Yeah, there's, there, there, I, I actually think that this is one of those things that some people do appeal to that. You do see sometimes that if it's a really strong appeal that, like, the police tell you that that is the one that pops off. So there is a weird thing that there's some data that that's not always the case, but I think most people are like Matt, and then there's some more charitable people who are like, okay, sure, I'll do it. But there's the thing I, I think uh, is always to be said here is uh, it's much more fun to join a party than a sinking ship, and trying to show that people could join a party is usually a bigger appeal. Yeah. So the thing I'll say is holiday content, if you can do it, it's, it's always easy clicks. I bet you this one says it because this one has the most uh, clicks on it. Holiday and comedy, always an unfair advantage. Let's try this one. I think yet again, the uh, saying why, like use the question in the description and then tell us why or give us some context to the song or laugh about how impossible it was to get you all in that frame. Something like that for the initial caption, I think could have done you a little bit better here. Uh, yes, I agree with that. I think uh, lighting is not great. When you have a voice that lets you hit some real highs... Start on that, because that's immediately... This guy can clearly really sing, right? And there's so many just, like, bad fucking singers on this app. Understatement. If you have... And there's so many just bad musicians on this app. That if you're, like, skilled, lean into it and show that to people. You know what I mean? Um, I actually really like the... When you get the whole band into the vertical frame, I think that's really cool. Yeah. You know, and especially when you're all jamming, a very strong look. And I think that also engages people. And there's like bands that get a lot of traction because they all can just squeeze into the frame and they make it work. Uh, there's a lot of people doing really creative stuff around there. That band I uh, highlighted in the Earworm video, uh, October Drift, they they consistently shock me how well they do that because they'll be in like a big wide shot and they figure out how to make it work in 16.9. And I'm like, damn. Also, having a picture that's not you or a cartoon doesn't there we go. Work. See, that's the right. Like, it's the same way you don't want to have like your album art as your profile picture anymore. You know, mm -hmm. same deal. Like, you want it to be a picture of like you or you and your band or something like that. Having it be a meme or something generally doesn't work to your favor. Everyone knows that isn't you. It doesn't matter. Let's watch this one since I, I want to be respectful and let you get to uh, the gym or whatever you're doing. The brand new burger you can fuck. This burger is better than sex. You can fuck this burger. Only at Burger King you can stick your dick in this. Well, I liked it, but that's not music. Let's try something up here. Okay, so I uh, it felt like I don't know if it was there. Let me try this one. 
Okay. So, so it wasn't actually the problem that the, the screen actually went black at first. It wasn't actually the thing. This format, I see doing great for a lot of people. I'll tell okay. you, I think this is probably a little long, but the other reason that this isn't doing well is like these hashtags yet again, add me to your playlist might be worse than FYP. No. Because who's looking at that and saying, yeah. like, I'll add that to my playlist. That, that is not a hashtag. That is showing you don't know how to do hashtags. And then you got a hashtag at the end that was with us. Like seriously, people taking the time, like it's the same thing as that, like a thumbnail on YouTube that a lot of people are like, I take half the time I made the video to work on the thumbnail. It's the same thing. It's like taking five minutes to really make sure you got the best hashtags possible that are going to get you to the first people and like making sure you didn't misspell a bunch of things is such a big deal. Cause honestly, this video should be doing better because it's like a good thing. I mean, I think you played it a little long, but like, this is definitely a decent thing, Matt. Yeah. Genuinely funny. Like it has good self-awareness, you know, I think that's pretty valuable. You know, I would have some sort of actual text in the caption, not just a bunch of hashtags, you know, but otherwise, you know, and you can even just put like, tell me why my song is trash. That works for engagement is if it roasting and, uh, you know, uh, I saw one that had so many comments the other day that was, uh, are you feeling my unibrow? Because the person had a wild unibrow, but I saw that they faked it. Yeah. But like, this is what it's about, dog. Artist, producer, yeah. Indie Music Monthly. Let's find our piece together. I think this bio could do a lot of work there, buddy. Artist, producer, you know, it, it, this is Indie Music Monthly. Yeah. Like, this is, it's not specific enough to give anybody anything enticing here. Like, literally, if you just put the genre, we would already know. Yeah. Let's do this. This one has a pretty high engagement rate. Let's look at it. Okay, I'm going to hit stop because this is so, so long and should not be this long at all. This is good. And particularly, this is something we didn't discuss last time, Matt, is using these effects that give like a color hue and a grain to it. The The kids respond very well to that stuff. Downloading some $5, $10 app that feels like the vibe and the waviness of your song is really, really good money spent. Same thing, if you're editing in DaVinci, downloading some packs of effects and old school filters can really, really do a lot for your content. Yes, that's good. The other thing that I think is clever here is having a pet in the content. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. That's like, we didn't see any like that last week, but like having an animal in the content, <sighs> game changer. You know what I mean? Like, it's truly the uh, butt pick of the animal kingdom. I mean, it's, but it's like, I used to manage a band where like I got my cat kind of randomly by accident. And the way I paid for that cat was I would just post pictures of the band's merch with the cat. And then that would sell enough merch that I could just like afford to feed the cat. Uh, I, I like this. Lauren and I have decided that when we get our next dog in a month or two, that uh, if they really have to be an influencer dog to pay their way through it. But actually, or I just saw. Um, <laughs> not really, but actually we're not doing. I'm not but making you, content. What's that band you have like the dog who goes on tour with them? There's a lot of bands who do that. I mean, Teen Suicide, my friends, they bring their dog out sometimes. Well, yeah, the point being cute pets, pets in general, really, really good exploit. You know, it's another one plants people love plants man yes i mean as someone whose girlfriend keeps telling him uh that she has a plant budget for their new apartment that i'm apparently paying for boy do i know this so you, the one thing i want to say is i'm not going to go off on the hashtags too much on this one since we really did that a lot last time but absolutely none of these hashtags are doing you any good they're way too broad and they're wrong yet again hashtags should be for the people most likely to like your music and very niche not huge broad things and vibe check definitely does nothing okay let's should we watch one with a high engagement rate or a low one actually let's do this this one has a very high one this has 17 percent it has one
Okay. I totally get why this did well because, uh, one, most people know this song and that would be, get at it. Two, there's a really interesting thing that I, I think that's one of the least exploited things on TikTok and things I constantly see do big numbers, yet I never see it as a trend because I think it takes a little brain power. And let's be honest, uh, musicians' brain power, not so much. Analyzing song lyrics, writing even what you interpret from a song lyric, or writing like, when Death Cab for Cutie said the glove compartment is inaccurately named and everyone knows it, I really felt that because you know what else is inaccurately named and you say, uh, me, because my band name is this, or you find something like that and you do a flip on it. That shit is TikTok gold. I see that boom up. I like every time I take note of that, I'm like, I can't believe more people don't do this because the numbers are huge whenever I get it in my feed. <sighs> Fucking tell me about it. <laughs> uh, I, but like, it's also just like any piece of nostalgia content always does well, mm -hmm. which is like the big thing. That's like why bands don't die after 40 years is because yeah. nostalgia content is just going to work and it's going to work and it's going to work. So you have that piece too. Dark which about, they took again. Here. Dark Side of the Moon is the second best-selling, long-running album of all time. Do you know what the first is, Matt? I honestly thought it was Dark Side of the Moon. Is it? Uh, uh, it, got, it got replaced when it fell off the charts. It fell off the charts before Appetite for Destruction stayed on longer. All right, this matches the Avatar I just saw. Your everyday musicians. That's not so bad. Right. I kind of like that, even though I think you should do curiosity, but like that at least is strong. So we got a 6% engagement rate, which is kind of low. If I see that on an overall profile, I'm thinking you need to think about quality a little bit more than quantity. What's my engagement rate? Oh, this is a ripoff. Look at this. This person like AI'd your face or something. Wait, really? No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, did, did I do this wrong? Is it on a Z? There, there. Stop chasing Dude, I am really out of it. You have a 10% engagement area. That's good. It's not great. It's yeah. good, though. I mean, that makes sense. But it's also like the level of quantity, like kind of artificially deflates it. Uh, okay. I, I think this one's interesting. This one has 28,000 plays. Let's see what it, uh, what's up with it. Nice to tell you about that. Thanks, man. It's a great Cadillac. It's actually built in the 80s, so it's quite vintage. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. Mine is from the 60s. It's a Duesenberg TV custom. Oh, yeah. I did some customization on my guitar as well. It's pretty cool, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. On my guitar, John Lennon actually changed the pickups himself. <laughs> oh, that's cool, yeah. Well, um, Jimi Hendrix wrote a poem on the back of my guitar, so that's quite unique, I guess. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Well, my guitar was gifted to Herman Lee's mother when she was pregnant with him by John Lennon himself, and also Paul McCartney signed on the back. You know, it's really interesting. Kurt Cobain learned playing on a Gretsch Cadillac himself, so yeah, he signed the neck of the guitar, so I have like um, him and Jimi Hendrix, you know, at one place, actually. Well, the bridge on my guitar was adjusted by Jesus himself when Michael <laughs> Jackson <laughs> ever had to life in the 80s. You know, I like it when guitars are more on the technical side. So I had the um, the tuning mechanics I have on my Gretsch. They are invented by Nikola Tesla, so that's pretty innovative, I think. Well, my guitar was metralized by God himself. May I try it out, perhaps? Or would you mind? Sure. Mm, I think there's some problematic with the intonation. I think the E string isn't... Something is going on there. That's actually a custom adjustment that Darkwing Duck made just before I got it. How much did you pay for the guitar? 200 bucks. Nice guitar you got there. Thanks, man. It's a great... So... I have to say that's very good, but that should have been three parts. Like you could have just continued yeah. the bit from video to video, but like that is a fantastic idea of content musician would love. And it is actually a hard thing to do on TikTok. Genuinely funny. I laughed yes. like three times. This is the thing, right? It's like, I think everyone, everyone wants to make like lowest common denominator jokes and that is inherently bad, right? Whereas, like, when you make a very specific... Because part of what makes stuff funny, especially on the internet, is when there's an inside joke aspect to it, right? Like, it's much funnier if I make a neutral milk hotel joke than if I make a Taylor Swift joke. Because the people who get, you know, a neutral milk hotel is... What, what's our friend's uh, Instagram bio? A neutral milk hotel is a complicit milk hotel. Like, that's a way funnier thing to say than, like, some sort of Taylor Swift singing about guys she breaks up with joke like just and it's a lot harder to make a joke that is lowest common right so when you do like specific pieces of humor people connect a lot more and that's exactly what this is and because it's musicians who are 95 percent of your first 10,000 fans yeah okay let's watch this one and then we'll see what happens after that do you know that feeling when you rationally know that something is pretty hefty but deep down you just don't give a frick we kind of wrote a soundtrack about that Yo, 
I want to say. Wait till it's done, man. Okay. Uh, I've uh, yet again. This is a video that should have been much, much, much shorter, and it probably would have performed even better. It's pretty good. The one thing I would say too, though, is if we were able to see when people swiped, I bet you it was when you were very out of focus. One of the things to remember with shots is um, having a lot of face keeps people engaged and keeps people from swiping. I mean, look at Matt's videos. His face is always just so up in it. But like, there we go. That's what the that's what the people are looking for, that pretty face. But like, truly, when you're out of focus, you're not having as much engagement. A lot of people respond to the eye contact thing. I mean, there's AI things to make eye contact now. World is getting crazy. But yeah, I would do that. The other thing I want to say is this song will be released on June 23rd, Independent Artist, all of that. This, yet again, just like we said last week, this ain't your father's Instagram. This is TikTok. Ask something that's going to get engagement. Don't treat it like an announcement. One thing they did here that I want to point out real fast mm -hmm. is they leaned into the Europeanness. So just hear me out because that that has two things. One, its authenticity is valuable, and like, and there's I think I guess they're Finnish. I think they have a sense of humor about it. You know, like with his dance and like the whole way they portray it, like mm -hmm. that's good. But two, nothing is cringier than being an artist pretending to be you're from somewhere else. And the most the people who are most guilty of this are Europeans pretending to be American. And that's almost always very cringe and weird unless and, and it just it doesn't work. You know what I mean? Like, um so don't do, am I making sense, Jesse? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I I think the, you you were clear there. And, and it's I just think the authenticity <laughs> Being Europeans pretending to be American, you understand like why that's weird. Wait, real fast, Jesse, how do you yep. get the engagement rate? People are asking about that. Oh, vidIQ. I talked about that last week. Uh, if yeah, I don't, I don't good. know what vidIQ's platforms are. I pay way too much money for analytic tools every month. But vidIQ is a. I would go as far to say this: this is of the analytic tools. VidIQ is the best one. The problem is it doesn't have some things, so then you need TubeBuddy as well. But yeah, uh, it's good. Okay, this one has four thousand, which looks to be one of their bigger ones. Let's watch this. Easily. Local band plays to thousands of people. That's awkward. The defend pop punk. <laughs> uh, for people who don't get it, I used to manage the band whose slogan was that, and I made a bajillion shirts of it. Here's the thing. That is not an earworm. That is a part of a song. You should be doing the best hook of your song and making that as little as you need as possible so that it repeats well and it seamlessly loops at some point. Having the end of your song ring out and having this, people are just going to scroll and it's going to drive down the rate. It's actually shocking to me that this got as many plays, but also I'll tell you why it got as many plays. The song is good, but if you optimized that same exact footage, I guarantee you, if you put this video up and just did the best part of the hook here uh, and as minimum as possible, it'll probably do way better. And if you get rid of all these ridiculously bad hashtags, here's my two cents on it. The text on screen hook is really good, right? That, you know, local band plays to thousands of people that immediately makes you go, Oh wow. What's happening here. Okay. But when you're doing a video where you play in front of a bunch of people, show the crowd a little more because that creates like a sense of connection. Like I find this like running the Metal Blade TikTok. A lot of our stuff that does best is the stuff weirdly that like the band is playing their song, but it focuses on the crowd moshing or having a good time or whatever. That tends to have like the bigger impact is like the, the crowd. 
you know, uh, so maybe if you were to recut this video and put your hook more front and center, you know, maybe try to cut in more crowd shots from what you've got. Because I think, especially if you can get like someone crowd surfing, like that doesn't say numbers, honestly. I think something that, and you're making a great point here, but something a lot of people miss is that a lot of marketing is showing these could be your friends if you're doing yes. this thing. And this is what you could be doing with your friends. Uh, the, the example I use all the time in my, the video I regret making the most on my entire channel is the short I made about some 41 uh, fat lips video, because what it did at the time was the consensus among punk kids. And I know, cause I was one of them at this time, old as dirt was that we can like rap, we can like rock, but that rap rock shit is cringe. But then they did it in a cool way with punk. But what they did in the video is they showed that other punk kids liked it already. So that it made it feel more acceptable. And like the reason you see videos like um, Be A Badu B and Pink Panthers have both done the one in recent times where they just show, here's a bunch of freaks and they love this music. You're a freak. Why don't you come to the freak party? And that is powerful marketing. Like This is literally why hardcore got exponentially more popular over the pandemic is people watched our friend Sonny post videos to 856 of people going to shows and having fun. Yeah. Explain 856. Most people don't know this. It's very good. 856 is a website where this guy is completely independent. The guy who runs it is a little bit crazy, but like in an impressive way. He just has been filming thousands of hardcore sets and or but it's mostly hardcore punk, but it's also rock and metal and mostly hardcore. Yeah. But it's it's well captured, you know, usually on multiple yeah, couple angles. couple cameras throughout the set, not even always the and highest he, quality cameras. He's standing on stage filming, yeah, high quality cameras. No, not, not no, it's not always the highest. I believe he was using iPhones at first. Oh yeah, but it's it's gotten really yeah. good. And it's also like it feels very personal, it's well edited. He gives everything away for free. Like you can tip him. Like usually if my bands are gonna use this footage, I make them tip him. But that's what it is, is people see those videos and they can see are people having fun at the show, right? And you can tell which videos pop off or which don't. But if you look at the crowds, it's often because those crowds are having fun. And if those people are having fun, then people go, oh, I should go see that. But if yep. people are standing around the board because you're fucking lame live. Another thing, speech to text at the top of the video, especially if the speech reads wrong. If you're just doing your hook, don't have it read it. Don't ruin the hook. So former sad boy, currently less sad boy. I think that that's actually one of the better bios we've gotten here. Uh, yes. Van Isle loser core emo is also pretty good. Like, so yet again, people, the reason we're saying this is good is if you know these vocabulary terms, you're going to be like, oh, this is for me. Like, this is a thing. And it's, with it's four. Uh, the broad thing and you can see he's got 4.2 million likes he's doing damn well i remember somebody who, like a good amount of followers but not like but i see he's doing the smart thing here like all the videos are the same set same dress very important stuff uh that really helps you get followers i wonder if we know anyone who does something similar gee who could they be okay let's do this one with a quarter of a million i've completely ignored there's an amount to take reasons to take more lines i've completely ignored there's an amount to take reasons to take more well that's very good so this is interesting what he's doing on the, the things he's tash tagging a lot of bands that are somewhat similar to this you know matt do you have a feeling on this like uh i think like the funny thing about the dynamic of hashtagging other bands is like i think it's worth trying but if it's not working get delivering you numbers i think a lot of the time that's because people are disappointed it's not that artist yes but it's a good joke about that artist so so here here's my view on it right is like, I assume based on his his bio that he makes music like the front bottoms. So if you're making, you know, sad boy pop punk or emo loser core, whatever he calls it, right? Then jokes that people who consume that are going to also think jokes about front bottoms are funny because they're like the yeah. poster child of that emo loser core genre. So you can go make that joke. You know, Apes of the State is another good example. Well, they'll like make a joke about Rail Yard Ghosts or about whatever other folk, like Johnny Hobo. They make so many Johnny Hobo and Pat and the Bunny jokes all the time because... Everyone who likes folk punk yeah. likes those artists. And so content about that is going to make you go, oh, like this is someone who like knows what's up in my genre. I should go see what else they do. And then you find their music, which is directly inspired by Pat the Bunny, Johnny Hobo, Rail Yard Ghosts. And then bam, 
Same thing here. If he's making music directly inspired by front bottoms and he's making good front bottoms type music, you know, having those jokes about those influences is going to draw those people in and tagging those similar bands. It's going to draw those people in. Yeah. All right. Let's watch one more. Cause this one actually has close to a uh, half a million, which is impressive. Yes, uh, this is a very good joke, and uh, it has a popular song in it. But uh, Same thing. good work, Joel. I think that this is uh, our our first one that really is like you're, you're on track. And even you know the nine percent average engagement rate, I would say that usually is the hint that you're like uh, you're obviously capable of quality. That would be my hint that you would probably want to think about quality about five to ten percent more, and you can probably get a little bit more mileage out of things. For people not getting what I'm saying, nearly everything in life is a trade off between quantity and quality when we have time, and and sometimes you need to say, I'm going to spend more time developing and less time making. And uh, yeah, I'd say a hair more time developing and a little less time making to try to get better quality. It's about the only critique I could give because you're good at this. Uh, okay, let's do some. While, he, while Jesse pulls that up real fast, nostalgia played a huge role in that again. Ooh, and it, you know, Nostalgia, yes, yes. Nostalgia content. Doesn't need to be from the seventies. It can be from I think that front bottom song came out ten years ago. Now we have Wormser, DJ X producer, way too broad, doesn't tell you anything about genre, dopest geek you'll ever meet. While I like that, also yet again doesn't really tell you much about what we're gonna think, doesn't niche down enough. Let's try three eighteen. I just realized what I did. I had to go to Target to get some diapers, and I realized I'm wearing this extra large shirt and some shorts. And I'm not wearing a hat, which is kind of the same thing as not having any makeup on. And I ended up going to Starbucks and like actually shopping around and looking at stuff. And ladies, I get it. So this is fun, but I think like the syntax got a little lost. Like the, the, the point could have been made a little bit more clear. Matt, you have anything or should I try another one that's more music based? No, I mean, I think that's basically it, you know, but I do think it's, it's cool. like, Go ahead. being comfortable with talking to a camera is always a good, is always a good skill. Yeah. Okay, let's try this one since it looks more music based. It's 88 and worm. This shit is so gnarly. About to get dirty like flows at a phone party. About to show out like something they never seen. Ho. Got your girl one leg up like a flamingo. I'm feeling lucky. I'm winning big. No casino. Worms are mad. There's no time to practice. Blue lights, they mean go. I think compositionally this is good, but yet again, these hashtags are taking it to very bad places. You didn't need this much text on screen, and especially when it's like that sort of editing, you're kind of good with a little less. Like you could have just put gnarly or nah, and then the, and then the caption could have been who's bumping uh, that song, and that would have done the same thing, and it would have been less cluttered. Yeah, I'm with you there. Now we got rank of music. Let's see. 1.2 million likes. That's pretty damn good. More than uh, you know what I've never seen? Have you ever seen that, Matt, with that much space down, putting the lines in between? That's uh, I've seen people do that, yes. It's never weird. seen that in profile view. All right, this one has 80,000. That might be a good candidate. Let's watch that. Push me. Nice. I mean, there's a, a an interesting one on TikTok. As much as I'm not like, I don't think it should be a strategy, but there is something about celebrating something cool happening to you that doesn't happen to everybody. Kind of does get the algorithm going off a little sometimes. That like, it's almost like it's almost like people want to support you for something good happening because they want that too. I think if you show genuine excitement too, it's hard to like be mad at people. You know, like yeah, I think yeah, that's a great if, point, actually. You know, like if you show up and you're just like genuinely like, oh my God, like I posted a TikTok about like hanging out with Greg Ginn and how like Greg Ginn bought me a beer. And that's like the reason Jesse and I have jobs is that guy. And for people who don't know, there's an amazing book called Get in the Van by Henry Rollins. And it's all about how Black Flag basically invented DIY touring. I wouldn't invented might be a strong word. Black Flag kind made of made it feel. Maybe the right thing is um, really perfected that era of touring, and Greg Ginn was a lot of the mind behind that and the mind behind SST Records. Yeah, and DIY music in general comes from this guy. I, 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 no matter what, yeah, interesting guy. Interesting guy. Also, pi pioneered not paying bands royalties. That's a different story, though. My man. <laughs> okay, this one has 352,000. Let's see what's happening here. 
not only have you been tagging me in this way too many times, one of the comments actually has over 2000 likes. What? But yeah, I have so much work to do, at least two songs I need to finish as soon as possible, so if you think that I'm going to be doing this instead, you're totally correct. See, the easy way out would be just make a funk thing, like one of the comments did, but funk is not really my thing. But if it was my thing, it would probably sound something like... But it's not my thing. I'm more of a boots and cats kind of guy. Or like we say it in Finland, Ukkis Aitis. Which is a reference to another TikTok that's been filling the shit out of my inbox. Ukkis Aitis, Ukkis Aitis, Nahkataki, Topataki. Ukkis Aitis, Ukkis Aitis, Ukkis Aitis, Nahkataki, Topataki. So yeah, we're doing house. I'm gonna sample this. Rearrange it a bit. And use it among other elements in the drop. I think I'm done. To be honest, I don't even know anymore. Okay, what's interesting with this one is you probably could have gotten three to four TikToks out of this that all would have done well. Uh, this is a great idea, but yet again, kind of similar to what we were talking about before, is chopping this down more. But it got pretty good place, right? Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's really impressive. I love that he does that. I, I've never actually seen, I don't think I've seen a TikTok that was like that long and felt that long that did that well. Like, yeah, no, I agree. You see TikTok well for sure but that just with the way the edits were having multiple subjects in it was what i thought was interesting like usually longer tiktoks have one subject and here he kind of did a couple uh um, yeah I, and also yet again like we said before the dog that was god tier like i'd watch that again just to see the dog uh rocking out to the song yeah and um, also the mask is like cleverly done and yep. isn't like i feel like if you're gonna have the if you're gonna have the mask you kind of need to have like the voice for it yeah <laughs> Yeah. No, but like, you know what I mean? Because there's people where the back comes. No, and you know, it, it, too, even having your branding on the shirt there also really good because it's like just reinforcing some people say corny. But like, honestly, I think that that's pretty good. It looks stylish, looks good, feels right with everything. I have to say, I, it's, it's pretty good. Artist, singer, songwriter, filmmaker, storyteller. Okay, this is not your dating profile. We're trying to get people curious about you and show them w what type of community you're in, not pick up somebody on Hint. Is that not what people put in their Hint? Technically, Hinge is a little different. Fun fact, I met my girlfriend on Hinge. Let's do this one. That's 931. Okay, this is actually a good, interesting discussion. So one of the things I think is really bad advice is chasing trends on TikTok. But I would like to say this is not what I like to call a trend. This is a trope. So a trope is more like a style and a skeleton that people flip their own things on. When these things happen and doing how you can bring it into your personality, dash your music, uh, and we're all doing the like same format from CapCut uh, in the templates, those can be great to do. And uh, yeah, I think this is like a, a good, funny one. Uh, tying it back to music is good. Yeah, I think what I like about it is that it's like a personality building one, right? Like I think anything that helps build your persona and helps tell the story of you as a creator is really valuable because I think it's like, at least we've seen that a few times now, right? Like where people are flipping through and they can quickly get a taste of like, oh, this person has this sense of humor and this whatever, that's really impactful. Yeah, I like that. Okay, let's look at one more of theirs and move on to see if there's anything. Okay, 3,000. Let's see what happens. Can you show me? So here's why you need scales. Scales tell you which notes are in a key, basically. So if you know the scales, then you can basically play any song in that key if you can memorize where the note positions are and you can memorize what notes make up those chords. So if you're just starting now, you don't want to do what I did and learn chord shapes and just play those for years because I've... 
seriously stunted my growth as a musician and as a guitarist. So as of now, I'm going back through and learning scales as if I just picked up the guitar right now. So the site that I'm using to learn uh, started us with the A minor pentatonic scale. So I can just show you that today. So I just do one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one, four, and then back down four, one, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one. So the reason this is good is if I was to play along with a song in A minor right now, you can kind of figure the melodies out by ear just using those scales. But anyway, that's the A minor pentatonic scale. This is good content to make, as as Matt was saying, and that Matt and I harp on all the time and uh, clap back at some of the bigger morons in our field about talking to musicians is some of the best ways to get early fans because musicians investigate stuff and they see, like, if you're talking about the A minor pentatonic scale, they'll often check out your music. This is a great early growth strategy. But this video had, I'm going to say, not the best pacing I've ever felt. And then the other thing to remember, and we talked about this a little last week, is you don't want momentum to die. You don't want to do a final saying thing. You don't want to reiterate at the end. You want it to just flip unexpectedly so that it replays and then TikTok sees it as better in the algorithm. But I will say a lot of good hashtags in here, but hashtag I know I'm bad. Not, not good. Not good. Yeah. My main complaint was the pacing. Probably could have turned this into a couple videos. And also, don't be afraid to reshoot stuff, because I feel like the way he was explaining scales wasn't necessarily the best. So just keep keep that in mind, I think. It's like, you can, like, I definitely will, like, reshoot a chunk of a Bacon's Bits, like, two, three times if I feel like I didn't say something the right way. Uh, and I feel like he could have gotten his point across more clearly, more concisely if he had just tried saying that a few times. And like sometimes I'll even just write it by a friend, you know, where I'll be like, hey, did, did this make sense or should I say it this way? You know, uh, so just I want to answer a question in the comments real fast. Yeah, yeah. Can you elaborate on why chasing trends on TikTok is not a good idea? You can start. I have my opinion, but you go ahead. Yeah. OK, so here's a perfect one. Trending sounds, for example. So let's say this week the Kim Petras throat goat sound is trending and then you do a video about your music to it or something like that that's going to bring you to not niche audiences and too broad an audience and doesn't really do anything there's a girl recently who talked about this about like how doing all the trends sure it got her followers but it never translates to the music thing you want to find the right people and yet again algorithms are all about having the right people hence why there's a lot of angry people about my video I put up today about the Facebook ads thing, which that's a story for another time. And Matt and I debated Facebook ads like a year ago or two on this channel. If you want to watch that too, that's there. And Matt took the defend. I took the fuck them angle. Anyway, here's my point. When you do niche things around your music, you form algorithmic things with people who are similar. And then the algorithms look at people who like similar things and serve it to them. When you're doing big, long trends, you're polluting the pool by being uh, around a lot of things that are not connected to your music. Yeah, basically that. I also think it's just very rarely does a trend actually help tell your story as an artist. And usually when I see people doing, sometimes there's a trend that's like right on where people find a way to make a trend really fit into their thing, which is cool. And then it makes sense and then it draws in people. But usually if you're just doing a trend to do a trend or using a sound to use a sound, which is the vast majority of videos like this I see, it's like, oh, okay, so now a break from our, our normal brand to go do this thing to shill myself for views. To go put a pancake on my grandmother's head. Yeah, or whatever. Um, it was a trend I saw a few weeks ago. It was incredibly stupid. Okay, let's try this one. I was 10,000. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's showtime. You know that the most important thing is the present moment, right? Because there you can set your intention. That is our best gift. And that's why...
portion of your song. An earworm is a short hook that gives people a sample. Since you're more likely to get your TikTok recommended if it flips over, finding as little of it as you can that's infectious to spread will do you better. This is fantastically produced. I could have been a little more fast paced at times, but truly this would do so much better if you got that trimmed down to just an earworm and probably played the song from the very beginning of it, even in the setup and then faded it up. Yeah. I just want to point out using the cat. I think the only reason this got as many views as it did was, especially with the song not starting right at the beginning, was that the cat kept people hooked. Yeah, the, the, I, I have to say that. And then, it, you know, it's another really good TikTok trick is when you transition scenes. And like, that was like a very cool scene transition. So like, I feel like uh, a lot of times I feel like you take place, like there's that uh, saying that, I may have said this on stream last week, but like the worst writing is, and then, and then, and the yeah. best writing is but then this happened but then but then because if you're just going on and then and then you know like as the saying goes uh in uh it was a good burger no and then you wanted but then as much as possible right i think the always sunny's writers were talking about using it using because of this rather than and then which is kind of similar just a quick note on this while jesse's finding one there's huge value to having the same profile picture on all your shit oh yeah because great point literally Jesse is finding people because they have the same profile picture here as they do on TikTok. And it makes it a lot easier to kind of cross platform. Trying to have the same handle everywhere else too is really just FYI. So having a date six months from now for a song, five months, whatever it is, uh, that is, while it's nice for you, no one's marking their calendar for that and you're wasting space. Matt, how do you feel? Yeah. I don't know if it's just me, but writing official account feels like my space not like the modern day it's one thing when people do something funny like they know they're not famous and it's like a thing but like it just doesn't feel right to me like uh when people do that how do you feel i i feel the same way i feel like yeah obviously like even like weirdly small people are getting not you know getting mimicked on socials and that's obviously scary and weird, but they can also just put official account. You know, uh, I don't think that really helps you get anywhere. It's it's really only matters if you're like a pop star. And even then, most pop stars don't have. You know, the comments actually have an interesting one about what you feel about sponsored posts on TikTok. What do you call it? Uh, and I will tell you this. I obviously don't do sponsored posts on TikTok myself, but I, sh you know, I do all these consulting calls and a lot of people have told me the second they do a sponsored post and they advertise on TikTok that unless they do that again, they do not get any engagement. And that is a page from the old Facebook handbook, if there ever was one. Yeah. I mean, there's ways to do it properly. Like, if the problem is with all these platforms is if you're running ads and you don't really, really know what you're doing, you can fuck yourself hard. If, you know, because the thing is, if you're running ads and you're just kind of going boost, then you're going in front of a bunch of random people and then that fucks up everything, right? Because you're trying to market a niche product. If you're, like, able to get it in front of, like, the exact right set of people, then it's going to work out, Right. But, and you're actually going to see, you know, get relevant people following you and sending you DMs and being like, well, I discovered your thing. It was really cool. And that's what you want out of an ad, ideally. But you're not getting that when you just go big picture and it just ruins you. Word. Okay. Let's do uh, this one with 1820. We went in and we got the critique from the judges. And I mean, we look up to all these people so much. So when I saw that first napkin go up and he's like, Mirror Lake, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, I think we got this. I think got this. And then the next napkin, mirror like the next napkin, mirror like It just it, one after another. And it was just like, it was the craziest feeling. And it was just such a rush. We were the first band on any episode to sweep all five judges. And that just makes my heart beat fast when I talk about it. Cause it's so cool. Like that was like the sickest moment was just knowing that like, yo, we went in there and we did it. Like we made it happen. I remember walking out of there. I was just like, yes, we've got this. Like we got a real fucking chance at this. Let's do this. I was taken back by it for sure. Um, I think with all the hard work that we put in, it shows. That was so sick. I'm already, you know, like on fucking cloud a million while I'm out there. So just to see that sweep is just like, bruh, we still have our little napkins. We're going to get those up. I have an idea of how I'm going to frame them with the Troubadour uh, bracelets or whatever. Okay. Am I getting this right? There's a thing by Ash Samarian Records that he does yes. a talent show. That's right, Matt. Yeah. So 
here's the thing about this. This would be fine in a documentary, but I, I will even be honest. I think that, so for people who don't know, in my day job, I produce podcast documentaries and podcasts a lot. And that's what I do to keep myself entertained. So one of the things about a documentary is it's not interesting to hear of five people go, yo, that was crazy. It's one, if you're not adding color and telling stories, you're basically wasting time. So this content, since it was all just, whoa, that was crazy, this thing, you need to show, not tell. I, I just put out a short on this the other day of like, why is more important than what and showing rather than telling is a big thing. This could have been better if like you were cutting between scenes of this thing that happened. It's it's also just like cropped really weird and you can tell that a lot of it was cropped from yeah, the, um, a wider shot, larger shot. Like the end of the world, but it but it has to feel formatted for the platform and if it's not formatted for the platform, then people just are going to tap it right away. Yeah, there's definitely I've been seeing some really interesting AI stuff that's good about that, but I don't know if it's ready for prime time yet, but that's going to be a big thing soon. This one looks like it's actually about the music. Why don't we watch this one? This one looks pretty teachable. Biggest no-no in this, fading the song at the end. The song should loop, not fade down. I think that that, like, really, really, like, you could be doing so much better with this. I also feel like the hook could have been a little bit more concise. I kind of, on this one, I could hear where I think the loop should have been, which was about at the halfway part. I do like the putting band song thing there, because uh, one of the more interesting things, Medea, who's one of the only worthy data companies in the music business, actually put up a really interesting thing, thing that uh, about how many people don't know what song is playing. I can't remember the number, but it was absurd how many yeah, people don't even know don't know what song's playing in a TikTok. So doing that band mirror like song somber is very smart. But the big note I have here is yet again going off ten percent more than you're comfortable with really helps. This POV is like a really powerful emotion that a lot of people have felt and we all know it's really intense but the emotion you're doing on the camera it's feeling like you're holding back a little yes i don't even know if they're holding back that much as much as just the lighting and the background that makes it a little bit tricky to see you know i think the um the best at this is uh cheney from entheos who like gets millions of views on her singing videos just into her condenser mic, right? Of like her death metal music. And, but there's like very clear contrast. And I think you can't like be on a black background and have dark hair and be wearing black and expect the video to pop off, right? It's just too murky. So yet again, in this caption to you got all the lyrics, like that doesn't, that's not a thing. Yet again, how did you feel when this happened to you? Getting the audience to participate in an emotion most people have felt that are above a certain age. Age. You got a lot of potential here, and it's totally wasted by that and by doing. I know a lot of these hashtags are very bad. The interesting thing you have know, with your hashtag, though, that I should say is that what sometimes can be interesting is so obviously fans of Sumerian Records watch this show. So having hashtag no cover and hashtag Sumerian Records can help you get into some of those niches. But a lot of these, like rock and alt rock and FYP, are probably some of the most useless uh, hashtags you could possibly do. Yes, I agree. 